Hey everyone, and welcome to the Rewriting Crash Course episode three. Today we're gonna to be looking at characters, especially your protagonist, and then building the other characters around them, how that should look in your story, um, how you can identify problems in the draft that you have, uh, specifically with your characters, and how to build all of that out. Now, if you're interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one to rewrite your screenplay, there's a link to book a call where we can you know, talk about that in the description below. Um, you know, if that's something that you're interested in, but other than that, I hope you enjoy the video. Okay. So today we are going to be talking about troubleshooting characters, right? So first off, um, you know, you should have an idea of this from maybe what I talked about from the last video, but your protagonist, ideally a single protagonist, especially if you're starting out as a writer, if you shoot me a message and ask me why your three protagonist story isn't working, I'm going to tell you it's because you have three protagonists and you haven't written enough screenplays. You need to focus your story, right? Okay. So your protagonist is the nucleus of your story. So everything else in the story revolves around that, right? So your other characters, sort of character, 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 all of these characters are going to revolve around your protagonist as the center of the story, right? Now, you might be asking me, well, Tyler, what about my antagonist? Aren't they as important as my protagonist? Yes, but also the antagonist of your story, let's say well, they're over here, they're gonna be a huge part of the story, right? So <laughs> draw in their circle bigger to, to illustrate that. So they're gonna be a huge story, part of the story as well. However, they are challenging your character in a certain way as is the rest of the characters in your story, right? So even ally characters are a challenge to your protagonist in a particular way. So that's something I'm actually going to come back to later on in this video. But for now, I want you to be thinking about, okay, your protagonist is the center of your story and how do we build a story around them and how do we make sure that they are actually working, okay? So um, setting up your character <clears throat> or fixing your character rather, getting them on the right track is very simple, right? So you have your character and what you're going to start by doing is asking two main questions, right? So what does your character want? Very simple, but more important than you think. What does your character want? And what do they believe? What do they believe, right? These are the two most important questions that you are asking in your story. Now, why? For each character, this is important, right? Because for your protagonist, their want is going to then drive the entire plot of the story. If they don't want anything, your story is going to suffer. And this is a huge problem that I see in most stories that writers write, right? They, their protagonist does not have a clear want. It's something that they are going after with intensity or seriousness. What ends up happening is the story is just a character sort of Ha, you know, the characters kind of starts here and then things just happen to them, right? Things happen to them, happen to them, happen to them. And they, all they do is react, 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 react. And that's the whole story. Not that your character doesn't have things that happen to them and they will do some reacting to things that happen to them as well as acting in the world. But you need to view your protagonist as the driving force of your story. That's why they're the nucleus of your story. They are the ones that push your plot forward. Ideally, without them, if you remove them from the story, nothing is going on, right? And then, what do they believe is the second important question. Why? Because what they believe, one, informs what they want, and why it's valuable that they have this want. And also what they believe is what is actually at stake here in regards to the philosophical conflict, okay? So the reason that philosophical conflict was the video before this one, and now we're talking about characters, is because your character's beliefs are built off of their particular viewpoint within the philosophical conflict. That particular viewpoint that they have then defines what they want, right? So if your characters don't have a strong belief, then it makes it a lot harder to understand what they want and why. And a lot of the times, 
what they believe will define how they go about getting what they want. For example, if you have a character that believes, you know, lying and cheating is okay to achieve their goals, obviously they're going to be doing some lying and cheating to get there. And that belief changes the choices that they make, right? And so the choices that your characters make and the actions they take towards getting what they want defines or shows the audience what they believe rather than your character simply sitting around talking about what they believe. And then there is one final question that you should ask yourself um, that is super helpful to get your characters on track, which is essentially, what is at stake for your character, right? So essentially, you know, what happens if they don't get what they want, right? So why must they succeed? Okay, why is it important that your character succeeds, right? What happens if they don't get what they want? What is driving the negative side of the story? Remember that the negative elements of your story, the costs, which is something we'll talk about more in the structure uh, episode, the costs are going to drive the story just as much as what the character actually wants, right? So there's that flow there. And so understanding what's at stake, understanding what happens if they fail will help you um, in actually building out what they want and what they believe and why that is valuable. Okay, so now once you have once you have this kind of idea, what happens is you essentially build this system for every single character in your story, right? So it's not just that your protagonist needs a want and a belief, and it's not just that your protagonist and antagonist, ideally you have a general sense of where all of the characters in your story kind of fit on the spectrum. Now, certain characters don't necessarily have to hold beliefs, right? So like, you know, if you have like, you know, if we look at something like Lord of the Rings, for example, uh, Sauron doesn't have specific beliefs necessarily that, necessarily that are are gray enough in a way where the, where the protagonist is, you know, at risk of adopting the beliefs of Sauron. That's not necessarily what's happening. It's it's the other characters in the story, right? It's his fake allies. It's 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 his friends. It's you know the the pool of the ring's power. Like these other elements are, are what Frodo, for example, is at war with. Um, so you're not every character needs to have beliefs, but a lot of characters do in the sense that your protagonist definitely needs to have some level of of, of core beliefs that they're kind of going after. And ideally, you have other characters in the story that challenge the protagonist not only externally, but also through what they believe as well. Some characters can represent external external conflicts that challenge the character externally only, but that then you know becomes part of the larger journey, which is their beliefs being challenged. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So essentially, what you have like in the center, you have your protagonist, and you need to define you know their their main want. And their main belief as it relates to the philosophical conflict. Then you do this for the other characters in your story, right? You have this web of characters. So you have character one over here. What do they want? What is their core belief as it relates to the philosophical? Whoop. As it relates to the philosophical conflict. And then C2 want belief, so on and so forth, right? So then different characters will interact with your protagonist in different ways. And so when I say that characters challenge your, um, your protagonist, what I'm saying here is that they are in conflict with them in some way. It does not necessarily mean that they are an antagonist, but they do challenge them in some way. For example, if we look at Star Wars A New Hope, Ben Kenobi challenges um, Luke Skywalker. As his mentor, he challenges what 
Luke wants to do. He's trying to say, you know, what is your vision? What do you believe in? And he challenges Luke to essentially make a choice, right? Take action in some direction, right? And specifically there, it's become a Jedi, you know, learn the ways of the force. You know, you have a destiny larger than, than staying on Tatooine, this sort of thing, right? So that is still a challenge, even though, and they are still in conflict, even though Ben Kenobi is obviously more of an ally than Darth Vader is to Luke, right? But characters challenge because they still hold different specific beliefs, right? So even the characters that are allies to your protagonist challenge them in in different ways, right? And so the way that this happens is you have, you know, so you have essentially this web, right? You have characters. This is a good way to illustrate it. We have characters that have want and belief and then, so they are going after things on their own as the protagonist also has the core want and belief of your story. And so then these interact. And so how you then build out some of your scenes is you say, okay, well, this character wants this, 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 and this, right? They want this. And therefore this scene is possible. This scene is possible. This scene is possible. And this allows you to kind of understand, okay, how in different scenes do the two wants of this character and your protagonist you know, conflict or interact, right? And now we're starting to build not only a protagonist with clear wants and beliefs, but we're tr starting to build a story with characters that are full and complete, have their own beliefs, have their own wants, go on essentially their own journeys that interact and conflict with our protagonist. Um, and so when you do this, right, when you just boil it down, right, stop getting so lost in like all these other backstory elements necessarily or, or all these like costume design or how they speak or blah, blah, blah. Boil it down to these core ideas that I'm giving you. What does the character want? What do they believe? What is at stake if they don't get what they want? And then how does that interact with the story that you have, right? This is what is actually going to be driving your story. The costume choices or you know, the specific dialogue they use, those are not going to be at the same level of importance as nailing down these core pieces of, of how your character operates. Because the, the theme of your story, the reason your story exists, the thing that, you know, what you have to say comes from the philosophical conflict. And the way to, to, to take that idea, this sort of ethical, moral, philosophical dilemma, rather than just making it a philosophy essay where you read people's ideas on an, on this philosophy, you imprint it on characters who then take action externally, right? So you don't have characters standing around always talking about what they believe. You have characters taking action and being in situations where they have to make a choice that defines who they are, right? And that is the valuable thing that you're trying to learn. Um, if, you're, if you want a quick example of this idea, characters making choices, defining who they are, uh, check out my video on how to write a short film where I diagnose or analyze a Rick and Morty episode. So in that, you can very clearly see how the character's philosophical viewpoints then attach to their external actions, and that is what creates the plot. So definitely check that out as kind of a side video. Um, I think it would be helpful um, to you as you're, as you're learning here. Okay. So then I want to kind of bring back out what I looked at in the last video, you know, kind of re relating this back to this whole kind of viewpoint versus viewpoint, right? So if you remember from the last video, kind of have viewpoint one over there, viewpoint two over here, and the beliefs in your story kind of work like a spectrum. And so, you know, depending on what kind of story you have, your protagonist can be like totally over here, totally over here, somewhere in the middle and not sure. And, but especially wherever they're at, they oscillate. So in something like Paddington 2, which is a film that I've talked about before, um, you know, he very much holds his viewpoint, which is essentially like, no matter where you're at, make it a beautiful place, you know, you know, do the best you can with what you have, you know, that's, that's your focus. And then he is essentially a flat art character. He does not change from his viewpoint. However, he has moments that pull him in the direction of despair and hopelessness, but then, you know, at the end of the story, he ends up staying here and coming back. And that's what makes him a flat art character. Not that he's not challenged or not that he doesn't have moments where he's not sure what the right choice is or makes the wrong choice sometimes, but that at the end, he ends up staying over here, right? So in like thinking about this, wherever your protagonist is, let's say he's here, then your protagonist is going to be pulled in 
both directions by the other characters that sit on either side of this. Some of these could be allies, right? Some of these will be antagonists. But both groups of people will be challenging your character's beliefs and then creating conflict in some way because the allies can challenge your character by saying, hey, you should go this way, right? You should go to this viewpoint. The antagonist can challenge them by saying, no, this is reality. They're wrong, that sort of thing, right? And then your protagonist must make a choice about who they are and what they believe. And they make that choice not by saying, this is what I believe, but by taking action and the action as much as possible, revealing who they are and the choices that they make revealing who they are. Uh, character choice is a huge part of your story. And so it's like, once you have an understanding of what the character want and what they believe, then you want to build scenes that create choices that they must decide what they're going to do. Um, so let's see. Um, that is pretty much it. Like characters are not super, super complicated, right? In the sense of, figuring out what the most important piece is, right? Is there more to this in the sense of, you know, you want, it was like, how do you actually force them to make choices? What does that look like, right? How do you build scenes where they're actually forced to make a choice? How do you evolve that character arc, right? All of that then comes down to the momentum and the flow and the structure part of your story, which is what I will talk about in the next video. But when, if you are in a situation right now where you know you have a first draft or you have a couple of drafts that's not working, you don't know why, do these few things. So you know, first, identify for each of your characters and especially your protagonist, what do they want, what do they believe, and what is at stake. Write it out for each one. Make it very clear. And if it's not clear in your story, but you make it clear on the page, you might have a problem, right? Something is not translating over in your story. So that's kind of step one. Understand the want, belief, and stakes, and then understand, okay, how do the different characters in my story actually relate to my protagonist? Do they have wants and beliefs that challenge or come into conflict with my protagonist or not? What does that look like for the other characters in my story, and if I if you have characters that are extraneous that are not involved in your philosophical conflict, then it's probably either they need to be reworked or they need to be removed from your story, right? Because the goal of this whole thing is focusing your story down and then identif identifying what does and does not need to be in it. Um, so I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, this is kind of the, the core that you want to to base your characters on and this will allow you to kind of cut between the clear parts that are and are not working and sort of the mess of the rest of your character or you know what they do what their actions are this sort of thing um, so i hope that's helpful i hope that helps you identify a little bit more uh, your characters and why they may or may not be working in your particular story and hopefully it gives you some ideas on how to fix them by identifying these kind of three core things and seeing like what may or may not be missing it may help you get some ideas on how to fix your story um, and if you're interested in working with me one-on-one -on, -one on your screenplay draft to rewrite and solve your story's problems, then you can click that top link in the description and book a call with me and we can talk about it. And in the next video, we're going to be talking about structure. So I hope you look forward to that one and I'll see you guys later.